the, the I, I dare call it Uber, but I'm a planner, so I'm oh, trying to say we're going to control the whole city. And to, to the point where you say, yeah, no, uh, we're going to start somewhere else. And that didn't work out so well either. What do we do with, with, with planning? If, for instance, we can't decongest Metro Manila, what do we do with it? How can we do that? Um, and here's where I go into some of the, not even really new ideas, but revived ideas. And one of them is, maybe we need to put people back in cities. What do I mean? Um, and you know this from your studies, right? We've been planning our cities around the dimensions of cars. So the wide streets so that we can get traffic going. And what we've known for 5,000 years, our cities are for people. So we need to get it back to the dimensions of the people. And I'll explain that a little bit more. Anyone know who this is? Jane Jacobs. Jane Jacobs. What did she do? Countered there for Bussier. He wrote Death and Life of Great American Cities. She wrote a book called Death and Life of Great American Cities. Yeah. But before that, he fought against, she fought against this guy. Robert Moses was a great builder of New York. And he, and he built all of the bridges that exist right now. He built all of these public spaces. He cleared slums. And they fought over this project, which was a highway that would cut through the middle of Manhattan. And, and Jane Jacobs was not, didn't have a planning degree, didn't have a PhD. She was an editor for the Architectural Journal. And she wrote articles that challenged this and was able to stop it. And one of the things she talked about was that cities are not all about efficiency, not all about efficient movement. She talked about, in here's a book, Death and, and, and Life of Great American City. I will claim a little credit because the foundation I used to work for, and the failure of outline, right? Rock Terra Foundation gave her a very small grant to write this book. Office, right? She said that there is a ballet on the street that you have to pay attention to. That is, the street is not just for the movement of cars. It's for people. And the more people you have on the street, the better a street works. Eyes on the street. She's putting people back in the street. Then later in the 70s, this guy, Jan Gale, um, started writing. He was an architect and urban planner. Her wife was an artist. And he was observing cities and drawing the buildings. And she was saying, why are you always looking at the buildings? Why don't you look at people? So he started looking at what people were doing and realized that so many, so much of what we create as a built environment is actually hostile to people. And yet, people may do, right? So there's no place to sit, we sit on fire. And he started documenting that. Young girl is credited with the success of Copenhagen turning itself around and becoming more focused. So the, the, the struggle, that the intellectual struggle over the last century or so is are we in cities to do things? And so are cities supposed to do things? Or are we, are we in cities because we are beings that like other, other people? Because we're social creatures. I don't have an answer to that, but that's the tension that you see in the whole idea of ordering a city and making it more efficient, and the idea of maybe people are what matter. And we need to figure out what 